finally. So, you might be wondering a few things. Uh, if you don't know me, you're probably wondering why. Um, if you do know me, you're probably thinking, why? Um, the answers for all those questions are because I want to, and because I want to. So basically, if this is your first time watching me play a video of Juego, um, because I don't know why, I don't know why you haven't seen my other videos. I've done this for almost a year and a half, and uh, about a year ago, I decided maybe I should just focus on college, which was a smart decision. Uh, but however, that means I didn't record a video for like the last year or so, maybe more. A lot's changed since then. I don't even live in Wisconsin anymore. Spoiler alert, I used to live in Wisconsin. I'm just gonna jump, this is a shadow of what? This is the game. Uh, this isn't the beginning. In fact, I'm 75% done with it. I've played it for 41 hours. Uh, it's really fun. I uh, played the first one, Shadow of Mordor, on Xbox 360, I believe, and it's really fun. Like, I was like, yeah, it's pretty good, it's pretty great. And I uh, got this game probably a year ago, honestly, it came out in 2018, I think. And uh, I didn't download it. I was like, eh, eh. But recently, I downloaded it because I was like, why not? And it's so fun that it's pretty much all I play. I don't even leave this room, so that's good. I, uh, I'm not gonna start at the beginning because, like, let's be real, that's 41 hours of progress that I'm not just going to erase, but, like, why not start now uh, for you or well, whoever watches this? Maybe no one watches this. Maybe 200 people watch this, which is, would be cool. Um, we're just gonna jump right in. 75% uh, done. Uh, if this is in any indication, I don't know, 10 more hours uh, or so, I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, it's a really fun game. Uh, I've considered buying the other two versions, like story modes, because they're just, why not, it's fun. But it's, it's a really fun game, it's based in the world of Mordor, so if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, 100% recommend this game. Uh, there's a lot of cool characters. I mean, Sauron's in there. Um, the little dude who's Gollum. Gollum is in here. And he's actually kind of an ally. He's like, hey, follow me. And you just kind of like follow this dude running around. But to bring you up to speed, if you're wondering, how does this work? Um, I'm not simply just a, a human, I'm like fused with a ghost of a dude, um, and he had the one ring, you know, the ring, the ring, and basically at the starting of this game, he created a second ring that was more perfect, and then he lost it, and then we had to get it back from the, the spider queen, uh, Quilog, and I have it back, and basically what the ring lets you do is it lets you control enemies, and you could like call dominating them. So what I can do is I can shadow dominate, which means I can teleport basically, and I can just like take them over. And now this is like a gurog or something like this, a grog, and like I can control him. He's like mine, um, which is good. I feel like I should turn the volume down. Maybe that's better. Oh, uh, this is... I have never had a... I've never had a grog like this before, but basically he's an elemental. Uh, so he's not just a regular old dude. He's actually got poison powers, so I can just kind of do whatever I want with him. Um, which is actually kind of dope. He's gonna fight me because he doesn't like me, which is fair. I don't like me sometimes. Um, so this place was mine. This is where you started the game in here. Basically, Sauron's dude's uh, ring wraiths kind of took over. And that's kind of lame. 
So I had all these places, and you kind of start from the bottom, you just enter a new location, and I'm gonna show you the army. So this is like army, so like the Shadow of War is kind of like, it never, it like creates itself as it goes, as far as characters go. And so it has a bunch of these uh, commanders, and the commanders can be taken over. So you can take them over, and then they're your commanders, and they're more powerful. They have their own names that they create on its own. There's Nemesis, so like blue guys are mine, and like orange is like enemy, basically. And I would say, let's say halfway away in this game. So right now I'm like at 40, 40 hours in the game, which is actually that's a lot. Uh, they started me off with this dude, so Bruise. He's actually a really cool dude. He had like he has all this dialogue and stuff. Yes, they can talk. And he was my dude, and I rolled with him for a while. And the last mission I did, I was defending this castle. I had war chiefs and everything. But as soon as I took it over, he like turned on me and like killed me. I, spoiler alert: I can die in this game. It's not like any other game where it's like you die and you restart the level. No, literally, I can come back from the dead, which is pretty dope. And this dude took over uh, lane, and it removed all of my war chiefs, which are like, I don't know, they're war chiefs. They're, there's the king, let's say, and then there's war chiefs, and then there's all your commanders. And you kind of work your way up the system, so you like get your commanders, and then you infiltrate the war chiefs, and then you replace them with your own people as like spies. And then you finally you storm the castle, you do this huge battle scene, which is really awesome. And then you take out the, the king, the commander, whatever you want to call it. And then it's your castle. So basically this guy just decided, like, screw it, it's my castle, it killed me. Uh, so that's what happened, like, 20 minutes ago. Um, and I was like, hey, this is a good time to start recording after all this cool stuff. I mean, so I have a garrison which basically means um, when you dominate people that are in like other worlds or other battles, they get sent to the garrison, and then you can take them from the garrison and put them in there. Then you have training orders, so you can give your, your people like fire weapons, and you can make them legendary, you can up their levels by five, which is pretty epic. You can use these little coins that you collect to like pay for it, have all these, these items that you collect, you know, there's they're legendary and they have more powers and whatever and you upgrade them after completing challenges, which is also a really cool aspect of this game. You have all these powers as well and the upgrade tree is pretty epic. However, I found that there's a lot of them. Like I have 14 skill points. So each one of these costs one skill point to upgrade. Or not even upgrade, it's just get. And I found that I'm really not interested in getting a lot of the other updates. Like, I have 14 skill points, and I guarantee you there aren't even 14 things to unlock. So I'm like, why? Um, I mean, the things I have right now, I like to collect all my good guys and make sure that playing field is more so pushed in my favor before I start. Now, when I start this mission, unfortunately, the Grog is going to like, disappear because it's rude, basically. But they show you this thing, level 13, honestly, I don't even know why that's this it's overwhelming, he's just gonna destroy him. But I get to help. So I kind of just like hey, I jump in and help him get up because that just increases the chances of him winning because I won't lose. He could. The Catacores haven't got wind of us yet. Soon we strike. And yeah, all the dialogue is like self-creating in the sense that it gives you a, a new you know, thing every time. Uh, I don't take fall damage, also very nice. If they wanted you watching, they'd have tied you to a stake nearby. Uh, so you can get ambushed, which is again part of one of the game mechanics, where people just appear out of nowhere and they're like, I want to fight you. Um, you also go into time slow mode and there are so many aspects to this game, and I love all of them. Um, use Dooms, which basically he died from Cursed. So you get a, a sword from him, 
and basically I'm just going to destroy this man because I can't. There's honestly, there's just a ton of complexities to this game, and I love all of them. And just like that, uh, we went. So basically, what's going to happen is he's probably going to gain some levels. Uh, only some levels. Probably because he was only level 13, if he was fighting a guy that was a higher level, probably would gain more levels. Um, I just like to help my, my people out, basically, because that leads to a better, I don't know, a better chance, I guess you could say. I guess what's happened right here is that I've overleveled a little bit, because the other missions I was playing, you were pretty much on par with the levels that you were fighting. But I went back into this mission and everyone's like level 20 or 30. And I'm level 58, so it's like a partially um, mistaken game mechanic, I would say. Because I would like things to be, you know, where everyone's the same level as me or maybe even higher. But whatever. I still love the game. Like, uh, I don't know why this game didn't have much traction, but it's like just an amazing game so far. And we'll do this. Save these people. So they have all these little like, side quests, I guess you could say. It's like, these people are doing this thing, and then this guy's like, I'm gonna stop you from doing said thing. The thing is always taking you know, like raiding the Karagor pens, or just going on a hunt and like, ambush him. So there's all these different things that they're doing, and you kind of just have to stop them. Like I said, you can do stealth kills, and you can chain the stealth kills, which is an upgrade that I have. It's pretty epic. That guy looks like he's one that has copies. Oh. Oh. Yeah. We're just a wrecking shop, I guess. That was nice. It's the only one level again. It's... I'd like to see him gain more levels personally. But. What are you gonna do? Uh, what I might have to do, actually, is... I might have to dominate some of those guys and make a mine, because what happens when you clear out the army is that the game itself will replace them. And sometimes it's just like never-ending streams, so like, I take out this guy, and then another guy appears, and then... So you have to like gain intel on these people to find them. And what I can also do is have people infiltrate. Google. So what's gonna happen if I do this, if I infiltrate, is you either have to prove his words, so basically you're gonna fight this dude. And if he wins, he becomes a spy. So that's what this part is. But the reason it's important for me to watch it is because and it happens instantly. Like, if you wait, then it'll take a while to actually progress, but if you do it yourself, then it'll happen instantly. So it just makes the progress go faster, basically. I wonder what your insides look like. Another victim. I'll snap your bones. And there's different classes of people, so there's like hunters and there's defenders. And there's some shields. Hunters have arrows, so that's what you got going on right now. In my personal opinion, hunters are the worst because they're just so weak. The ranged stuff is cool, but often it's not it's not worth it in my opinion. You know, if you want to like gain a mind or army or whatever. I'd pick a defender any day. So like yeah, he's instantly going to lose. He's also probably been poisoned.
So now that he's infiltrated, what that means essentially is that if I go to attack him, he's going to be with him because so commanders guard war chiefs. And when I go to attack a war chief, he's basically going to be like, screw you. And then like stab him in the back, basically, which is what happens. Um, so I'm going to take him out so that the only person that's on his side is my dude that's infiltrated. So I'll do that. And there's also online vendettas, which is, is an online aspect of this game. So players around the world that are playing this, let's say they try to attack this commander and they lose, then an online vendetta pops up and then I get to kind of avenge them, which is pretty dope. And those typically aren't as easy. Uh, the guys are typically pretty high level that I'm fighting. And if you die, uh, you just get kicked out. So it's like, you get one chance, which is fair, I would say. So I like doing those because you get special quest items and just things to add to your inventory, basically. And just adds a challenge, because like, why else would you play a game other than to you know, have some fun and get some challenge? We protect these supplies with our game. lives. You hear me, boys? Those supplies belong to us. Get in there and take them. That's a, that's a legendary dude. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna kill this girl and uh, probably take over the other one. Long time with you. They'll just be a man shaped puddle of green goo. <laughs> That's kind of rude. Oh, he doesn't like me. Oh. Combat's pretty hard to explain. It's like, it was really confusing at first, but I played it for like. 10 minutes and I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. And actually, like, I'm playing on a computer, but like, it's still actually fun. Like, I actually tried to use a controller and, uh, bad decision. There's just, there's too many controls in this game. Like, there's just a crap ton of different mechanics that you have to control at once. Keyboard just gives you so many more options, and that's why I do what I do. So he won, so he's gonna like level up basically. Only one level, but now he's fair game for me. And I would love to add him to my team. Now. In case you haven't noticed, you've fallen right into my trap. Maybe I. Oh, dear lord. He's cursed, so he's got some magical powers. And I don't like this at all. <laughs> oh, no. My health is in the bottom left, and I'm just getting destroyed. Ah. And also, the little cues that it gives you, so like that said, like left shift, for example. I love the visual cues the game gives you just to tell you what to do. Not what to do, but just... If I had to think about it every time, then I would probably make a lot more mistakes, but it just kind of pops them up and says what you need to do. And I love that. So I don't know where he went exactly. So that's the dominate aspect of the game, basically. You just kind of take them over and make them yours. And they'll kind of play coy, like they'll just pretend that You know, bad guys, essentially. And then you can kind of activate them, like sleeper cells, basically. And they kind of take over. And as you can see, my dude that I was just fighting escaped. Which is kind of rude, because I kind of wanted to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. Wait, why do you have a shotgun? Phrases. Um, his blood brother. Really? Blood brother. Oh, you know what? I am really glad that I didn't uh, kill him. 
so basically, this guy that I was just fighting and him are blood brothers, which basically means if I were to attack him, my guy would turn on me and just kill me. So actually, I'm glad I lost because this guy would have taken just would have screwed me, uh, which would have been a loss personally because he's a high level at least for this area where most of the guys are like 20 and whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to death threat him, and what that does is number one it tells him who they are, and then number two. He gives you higher quality gear if you beat him. And Gollum. I think it's him. So I'm actually going to do that right now. Sometimes what I would do is I would send a death threat to the number one it ups their level. And so once it ups the level, it's like three levels again. And then I would just dominate them and make them on my team. Which honestly I'm probably gonna do.